Bonjour, mes amis, and welcome to Gourmet Cooking. Well, we're going to travel a little bit to this time. We're going to go to the northeast part of France and do a wonderful Alsatian meal, a, a dish from the area of Alsace that is so well known. It's called Choucout Garni à l'Alsacienne. With that, we'll have some parsley boiled potatoes and a wonderful apple tart from the same region. Now, this is an ambitious show, so we better get started. But for those of you that are interested, on page 90 and 91, you will find the recipes for this show in volume three of Gourmet Cooking. So we put the recipes aside and begin to prepare our basically two main dishes, but there's a lot of things in it. We're going to, first of all, <coughs> I have been uh, starting ahead of time here and I've sauteed two nice onions until the Onions are nice and limp, and we want to, first of all, take a nice baking dish and put our onions in. And we'll set that aside for the moment. Now, this dish, of course, is sauerkraut, along with some wonderful sausages, some uh, smoked sausage, some frankfurters, and some large um, uh, other kind of sausage, and some ham hocks, and some bacon. It's really a very interesting dish. And we're going to have to proceed shortly with the apple tarts, so let's do a couple of things first to get this on the road. First thing to do is to take our frankfurters, our knockwurst, and our smoked sausage, and we'll saute those a little bit and sort of grill them or brown them and get those ready for our dish. In the meantime, we'll take our apple tart and start on that. So let me go to the refrigerator now and get the pie dough that I've already rolled out to save a little time. And we've already put it in the tart pan. We put it in here, of course, to keep it nice and cold, to keep that butter from melting. And as you can see, I've already rolled out the pie dough and have put it into this tart pan. And the first step on this is to take some melted apple jelly and cover the bottom. Now, you're not only adding a flavor, but you're kind of waterproofing the pie dough to help it uh, keep from absorbing any liquids from the fillings that you put in. So we're going to put two good tablespoons of the melted apple jelly. Put that aside. And then we need to take some nice apples. Let's take one quickly and see if we can peel this. We want first to take the core of the stem end out, the blossom end with our knife, and then peel this apple. And we'll cut it in half and remove the seeds. It goes very quickly. And we're going to need about eight or nine halves of apple for this particular size tart. Cutting it in half. We then, putting our thumb on the seeds, we simply run our knife around and take the core and the seeds from our apple. We then need to take this apple and cut this on an angle in slices. But you keep the apple intact. And then lifting that, ideally you take a little spatula of some kind and you slide it into your pie and you spread the apple a little bit. Now I've already done a bunch of these to save time. So 
let's line our apple, our pie rather, with our apples. And we fill it more or less. You can see these were done just a little while ago. Unfortunately, they do turn a little brown. But not to worry, they are perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. And when they're all cooked with the cinnamon, that little bit of discoloration will hardly be noticeable. All right. We've got our apple. The next thing we want to do is take a good tablespoon. Oh, we need to turn our sausage here before they burn on us. Fire's a little hot. We'll turn that down and just turn these over from time to time. In the meantime, we sprinkle this with a good tablespoon of sugar and we'll put this into a 400 degree oven for 25 minutes. Now I have a cookie sheet here, put that on the cookie sheet and we'll place that in our oven for 25 minutes and then we'll come back and do the next step in this. In the meantime, we'll take our, make sure our sausages are not, oh they're going to brown a little bit, maybe a little heavy but that's all right. We're going to take our sauerkraut and we have three pounds of sauerkraut. The first step is to take half of the sauerkraut, spread it over the onions, and then we're going to put in there a couple of nice ham hocks, because I'll bury them, and then some nice thick slabs of bacon. We should have about six or seven slices of bacon, which I've cut in half. So we cover this half of the sauerkraut. with our bacon. Let's turn these sausage again. And we can set those on the side for a moment because it's a little while before we'll need those. Now that we've got the bacon and the ham hocks, we then cover with the rest of the sauerkraut. So we have this three pounds of sauerkraut covering the bacon and partially covering the ham hocks. And then we're going to put in there some seasonings. And to do that, we have a little piece of cloth. This happens to be a piece of one of my dish towels that is nice and clean, but it began to tear on me, so I no longer needed it. Ideally, you'd have a piece of cheesecloth, or a good piece of gauze, or any piece of cloth that's nice and clean, of course. Now, in there, we're going to place or rather on this, we're going to place two bay leaves, three cloves of garlic, whole cloves, three whole cloves, the spice clove, and we're going to place six juniper berries, a very unique spice or herb that's common to a lot of German and of course Alsatian cooking. We take that and wrap that into a little bundle. We tie it up and we bury this in the sauerkraut and this will give it a lot of our flavor. If I can tie it, there we go. And the little piece of string will help to get it out. So we bury that more or less in the sauerkraut. And now we need our liquid, our braising liquids, and that's going to be one and a half cups of a white wine and one and a half cups of a nice rich chicken broth. So we have the first step in our sauerkraut dish. We need to cover that though with some foil. We'll place that in a 
350 degree oven and this cooks for one hour and 15 minutes. So obviously I've got one already in the oven at least that far. But we'll put this one in the oven too. That cooks for an hour and 15 minutes at 350 degrees. And it will be ready for its next phase. Wipe up a little bit. As I say, we have the sausage, which we can again put back on low heat. And we're going to have some nice smoked pork chops. These are nice center cut, deboned pork chops that are smoked. We'll add those to the dish as we proceed down the line. To go with that, we have boiled potatoes. We took some nice potatoes like these, we peeled them, and we boiled them just before we went on the show. They're in a pot here, steaming to keep them nice and warm. So we'll also have the potatoes to go with that. Now let's go back to our tart. And after that tart cooks for 25 minutes, we need to add another element to it. And that will be two eggs. a quarter cup of sugar, a cup of milk, and we blend those together. So we have basically a custard type of mixture here, and that's going to go into our apple tart. The only thing it needs is a little enrichment, and that is a half cup of some heavy cream. Really make this flavorful and delicious. So really we have, as I say, a light custard. At this point we can retrieve our pie that has been baking for 25 minutes. As you can see, it's browned. The apples have almost cooked, and they have, that sugar has melted. So now we pour over those this nice cream. Now, my dough fell down a little bit there, so if I put too much of this, it'll run down the sides, and we don't want that. We finally then garnish this with a little cinnamon. This goes back into the oven for 15 minutes and we will have a beautiful apple tart in the style of Alsace. So we put that away and when it's finished it needs to cool. We need to unmold it and we have one final garnish there. In the meantime, our sauerkraut also needs to come out for a moment. And this is cooked for an hour and 15 minutes. You can see the nice juices. We then we can remove the bouquet garni. And at this time, We'll place over our sauerkraut this wonderful sausage. Say, be working them down into the kraut a little bit. And uh, these nice pork chops. We'll distribute those around, getting those sort of semi buried into the kraut. And this then needs to cook for 15 minutes longer after we cover it. So we'll put this back into the oven, it's a little heavy, but we'll put it into the oven at 350 for 15 minutes. Now let's clear the board because we're going to have to start serving our nice things. So after the tart is all 
cooked and allowed to cool, you have your tart all ready. Now we need to serve that and take this rim of this tart off. It's stuck in one place. Oh, well, we'll put that back and just play like it didn't happen. Then taking a nice serving dish, we'll lift this. Remember the tin bottom of the tart pan is here. I can lift that and put that onto a serving platter. And we can do the final garnish on this dish, which will be a little powdered sugar. We simply sprinkle it with the sugar, giving it a nice definition and another flavor. Very delicious. You can see that the apples are all nicely cooked and they have that wonderful custard. All this is in a nice flaky pie crust or a pot brise as they say in French. All right, we have our Alsatian tart. We'll put that aside and then let's go to our potatoes. We'll serve those and then we'll serve our Chukut garni, and for the potatoes, we need some butter, some chopped parsley. These are parsleyed potatoes. So chopping our parsley, we'll add that to the butter. Let's move it around a little bit. And there's an optional herb that we can add. It gives a nice flavor, and that is dill weed. It's the leaves of the dried dill plant. They go very well with the potatoes, and of course, it's a great accompaniment for the sauerkraut. A little touch of salt and possibly a little black pepper. This is optional. I personally like it. And we are ready now for our potatoes. So let's bring those over. Well, the pot's not hot. At least the handles aren't. And we have our potatoes, <coughs> which have been steaming. And we'll simply lift those out. They're very hot. We're depending on them to be very hot. To melt that butter, and when we toss this, we'll have our nice parsley potatoes. Now we're going to let that sit a moment before we toss in order to let that parsley, or rather butter, melt. All right. In the meantime, Let's uh, start assembling our chukut garni. We need to take that out of the oven. Bring that up to the front where we can all see. And uncovering, we want to Place our sausage. We really want to move the sausage and the meats over around. We want to line the platter first with the sauerkraut with the nice pieces of bacon that I've cooked in there. Move this out of the way. All right, we'll stop a moment though and take these sausage. They need to be cut in pieces. So let's do that. Our frankfurters, the knockwurst, nice and hot, very hot. And our nice pork chops. 
once we do some of this, we can get to the to the sauerkraut and finish that dish. Hot, very hot. So let's move our chops aside and see if we can't get more of this sauerkraut flavored with the ham hocks and the bacon and the wine and the chicken stock. It is delicious. Now, I didn't mention earlier, but when you buy the sauerkraut, it needs to be washed and rinsed and dried out, drained, to get rid of a lot of the salt that it's cured with. It's very salty and it's overly salty. But by doing that, you don't need to add any salt to this dish with the other ingredients that are already salty enough. So we can now take our sausage and spread those around over the sauerkraut, placing a pork chop here and there. This is a wonderful dish, one that you really will get raves from. Let's see if we can't get a few of these sausage. We have a little more of the sauerkraut, which we'll work in here, but we'll add any others afterwards. Let's see if we can't cut these all at once. They just need to be cut into what you might call bite-sized pieces, but you have the various sausages, the pork chops, and the wonderful sauerkraut with its own distinctive flavor. So, cleaning up this board a little bit, we will then now present our three dishes for today that represent the northeast part of France, wonderful region where it's sometimes German, sometimes French. The cooking is a, a mixture of the two, but it's classic in that area and it's something that you will enjoy. If you can't go there, you can do it at home. So we have our, our choucout garni, our sessien, our parsley potatoes, which now we need to toss in the butter and all those parsley and the other herbs and spices. That's an accompaniment to the sausage and the Alsace, Alsatian sauerkraut. And this tart is divine. I guarantee you'll enjoy it and you'll get raves. It's very easy to make. But these are three wonderful French, German dishes that we'd like to, we presented today. We're going to bring these into the dining room and serve in a few moments. In the meantime, we'd like to show you the recipes. Well, we have our Alsatian meal all put together, and I think you'll agree, it looks beautiful. And I can guarantee you, it, it smells delicious. It is really wonderful. The sauerkraut has gathered all the flavors of those juniper berries and the bay leaf and the cloves, along with the wine and the chicken broth and the bacon that was cooking in there with the ham hocks. The flavor is just fantastic. And then, of course, these wonderful sausages, the knockwurst, the frankfurters, the um, pork chops, uh, the smoked sausage, make wonderful combination. That with some boiled potatoes, it's just something to behold. And of course, for our dessert, we have our nice tart over there. But in the meantime, let me serve a little bit of the potatoes. And then I'm going to sit down here and compose a wonderful platter for myself. I'm going to get in there and get some of this beautiful sauerkraut with the nice juices. 
Then I'm going to take pork chop, a little bit of knockwurst, smoked sausage, and a piece of frankfurter, and maybe more as we go along. And of course, afterwards, we're going to enjoy that nice apple tart that just makes a rounds out this meal. Now, served with this is normally a beautiful German type of mustard. And we're going to put some of that on our plate to go along with those nice pork products that we have here. And of course, some nice pumpernickel bread, which we have here. I'll cut a slice off, a nice thick slice for that dark bread, that flavor goes so well with these particular ingredients. And we're going to have a nice dry white wine to fill out all the flavors. I know I'm having a good time already and I haven't even eaten. I know you will and I think you should try this. And believe me, if you don't like sauerkraut, you will be converted by this dish. It is absolutely magnificent. So try it. It's easy. It's fun. It's one that will get you raves at a dinner party. And I know you will enjoy it. And we're going to try it now. And until next time, a biento. La douceur du temps nous fait des avances. Partez, mes enfants, vous avez 20 ans. Partez en vacances, vous verrez la vie.